NASA's Perseverance rover successfully landed on Mars on February 18, completing a nearly seven-month journey from Earth and beginning a year's-long exploration of the Red Planet. Packed with groundbreaking technology, the Mars 2020 mission was launched on July 30, 2020, from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. Perseverance is NASA's fifth Mars rover, dating back to the Sojourner rover flown on the Mars Pathfinder mission that landed in 1997. After a 203-day journey, traversing 472 million kilometers, the rover encapsulated within a heat shield and backshell entered the Martian atmosphere on Thursday. Surviving temperatures near 1,300 degrees Celsius during the entry, the rover deployed a supersonic parachute, which billowed open to slow the spacecraft to subsonic speed. In an image taken by the high-rise camera aboard the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, the descent stage holding the rover can be seen falling through the Martian atmosphere. Perseverance then jettisoned its heat shield, allowing a landing radar and cameras to scan the Martian surface for a safe touchdown. The rover's aerodynamic backshell then released Perseverance's rocket-powered descent stage to do the rest of the braking before landing. Eight throttleable engines on the spacecraft slowed the craft's speed, and nylon cords lowered the one-ton rover to the surface. Once Perseverance's wheels contacted Mars, the descent stage cut the cords and diverted to crash a safe distance away, leaving the rover safely on the Jezero crater. Within minutes, the rover beamed back two low-resolution black and white images from its hazard cameras, providing the first-ever views of Jezero's landscape. As data relayed by several spacecraft orbiting the Red Planet gradually came in, the Perseverance team was relieved to see the rover's health reports, which showed everything appeared to be working as expected. Less than a day after its successful landing, Perseverance sent the first high-resolution color image of Mars, taken by the hazard cameras on the underside of the rover. Adding to the excitement, the mission returned a higher-resolution still image taken by several cameras aboard the descent stage as the rover touched down on Mars. Currently attached to the belly of Perseverance, the Ingenuity Mars helicopter is a technology demonstrator that will attempt the first powered and controlled flight on another planet. The helicopter team is now working with the rover team to look for the appropriate site for flight experiments. After the site is chosen, Ingenuity will take its inaugural flight within the first few months of the mission. If successful, Ingenuity could add an aerial dimension to the exploration of the Red Planet. Once Ingenuity's test flights are complete, the rover's search for evidence of ancient microbial life will begin in earnest. Check out our previous video to learn about the scientific instruments on board the rover and the mission objectives. Link in the description. A recent report by a National Academies Committee concluded that NASA needs to pursue aggressive development of space nuclear propulsion technologies if the agency wants to use them for human missions to Mars in the next two decades. The report mentioned that nuclear propulsion requires significantly less fuel than chemical propulsion, often less than 500 metric tons. And such a system would be helpful for a Mars mission that would include several advanced missions to pre-stage cargo on the Red Planet. The study said that both nuclear thermal propulsion and nuclear electric propulsion approaches must overcome significant hurdles for their use in a human mission to Mars. Nuclear thermal propulsion technology provides high thrust and twice the propellant efficiency of chemical rockets. The system works by transferring heat from the reactor to a liquid propellant. The heat converts the liquid into a gas, which expands through a nozzle to provide thrust and propel a spacecraft. Nuclear electric propulsion systems use propellants much more efficiently than chemical rockets, but provide a low amount of thrust. They use a reactor to generate electricity that positively charges gas propellants like xenon or krypton, pushing the ions out through a thruster, which drives the spacecraft forward. Using low thrust efficiently, nuclear electric propulsion systems accelerate spacecraft for extended periods and can propel a Mars mission for a fraction of the propellant of high thrust systems. Of the two technologies, the report was more optimistic about thermal propulsion. The report concluded that an aggressive program could develop a nuclear thermal propulsion system capable of executing the baseline mission in 2039. The report also noted that there had been little progress on relevant technologies in the field of nuclear electric propulsion since 2005, and the work that has been done has been limited to lower power systems. 
As a result of low and intermittent investment over the past several decades, it is unclear if even an aggressive program would be able to develop an electric propulsion system capable of executing the baseline mission. Recently, NASA has decided to launch its Europa Clipper mission on a commercial heavy lift rocket and not on the government-owned space launch system. Europa Clipper is a proposed NASA mission that will conduct a detailed survey of Jupiter's moon Europa and investigate whether the icy moon could harbor conditions suitable for life. Europa is a world that shows strong evidence for an ocean of liquid water beneath its icy crust, which could host conditions favorable for life. The mission will send a highly capable, radiation-tolerant spacecraft into a long, looping orbit around Jupiter to perform repeated close flybys of the icy moon. In the past, NASA was directed by Congress to launch the Europa Clipper using the SLS, with provision for that in the annual spending bill. A few days ago, NASA confirmed during a presentation meeting of its Outer Planets Assessment Group that leaders of the Europa Clipper project decided to consider only commercial launch vehicles for the mission. NASA requested the flexibility to use an alternative launch vehicle, saying that it needed the SLS to support the Artemis moon mission. This decision likely means that either SpaceX or Boeing will use their commercial vehicles to launch the mission when the time comes. Europa Clipper project scientist Robert Papillardo said that the team has clarity on the launch vehicle path and launch date. The mission has a planetary launch window in 2024 that opens on October 10 and closes on 30, based on the trajectory calculated by NASA. According to NASA, using a commercial vehicle to launch the mission could save as much as $1.5 billion. Last week, NASA has assigned two crew members to launch on the agency's SpaceX Crew-4 mission. This is the fourth crew rotation flight of the Crew Dragon spacecraft to the International Space Station. NASA astronauts Chell Lindgren and Bob Hines will serve as spacecraft commander and pilot for the Crew-4 mission. Additional crew members will be assigned as mission specialists in the future by the agency's international partners. The mission is expected to launch in 2022 on a Falcon 9 rocket from Launch Complex 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Lindgren, Hines, and the international crew members will join an expedition crew aboard the space station for a long-duration stay. This will be Lindgren's second trip into space following a 141-day stay at the space station in 2015 for Expeditions 44 and 45. Before being selected as an astronaut in 2009, he was a flight surgeon supporting space shuttle and space station missions. In December 2020, NASA named him as one of the Artemis team of astronauts, helping to pave the way for NASA's upcoming lunar missions. Hines, a lieutenant colonel in the U.S. Air Force, was selected as an astronaut in 2017 and will be making his first trip into space. Before becoming an astronaut, he supported multiple military deployments in the Middle East, Africa, and Europe, served as a flight test pilot for the Federal Aviation Administration, and flew as a research pilot at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston. Now, let's discuss some of the major Starship updates from the past week. Texas's harsh winter weather has postponed the scheduled static fire test and the subsequent flight of Starship serial number 10. As Texas faced record low temperatures this February and snow and ice made roads impassable, the state's electric grid operator lost control of the power supply, leaving millions without access to electricity. Failures across Texas's natural gas operations and supply chains due to extreme temperatures are the most significant cause of the power crisis. Though a large Tesla solar and energy installation has almost certainly lessened the blow, the Starship test facility at Boca Chica has also faced difficulties during this harsh winter weather. As a result, the scheduled static fire test and the much-anticipated test flight of Starship serial number 10 were cancelled last week. Despite these difficulties, SpaceX has managed to keep the lights on and continued work at its Starship factory while also slowly but surely preparing Starship serial number 10 for its tests. A recent public notice of Cameron County ordered a temporary closure of State Highway 4 and Boca Chica Beach from February 22 to 24. If all goes according to the plan, SpaceX will be able to put SN10 through its first triple Raptor static fire and qualify the rocket for flight between Monday and Wednesday. This will potentially open the door for the high-altitude launch and landing attempt as early as the end of the week. Ahead of the test flight, workers have collected the final remains of SN9 and are removed from the launch site.
Recently, SpaceX and the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration have concluded the investigation of the failed landing attempt of Starship Serial No. 9 that occurred on February 2. According to FAA, the SN9 vehicle failed within the bounds of the safety limit. Its unsuccessful landing and explosion did not endanger the public or property, and all debris was contained within the designated hazard area. The FAA thus closed the investigation of the mishap, clearing the way for the SN10 test flight. In a recent tweet, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk said that SpaceX is working to lower the minimum throttle point of the Raptors, enabling them to use all three engines during the landing burn, without shutting down the engine with the least lever arm or having any flame out risk. Works are continuing on the Starship landing pad to make it thicker and stronger to withstand an explosion in case of a future landing failure. A second layer of concrete got poured on the landing pad last week, increasing the overall thickness of the pad. Workers completed installing rebars over the pad's inner regions, and concrete work on this region will begin this week. Structural works are underway near the orbital launch mount. The three-cylinder rings, formerly thought to be fuel tanks, are now assumed to be water tanks for holding pressurized water. These structures may hold pressurized water for the deluge system, which supplies water to absorb or deflect acoustic energy generated during the Starship launch. Water-based acoustic suppression systems that aid in reducing acoustic energy by injecting large quantities of water below the launch pad into the exhaust plume and in the area above the pad are common on rocket launches. Usually, rocket launch facilities use water towers to supply a large quantity of water at high pressure for this purpose. But it appears that SpaceX is planning to use highly pressurized water stored in tanks placed at ground level for the Starship acoustic suppression system. Water from these tanks will be sprayed across the orbital launch mount and onto the exhaust plume of super heavy boosters for sound suppression. A similar concrete base with a tank atop can be seen at the Starship build site in this aerial image, taken by RGV aerial photography. What do you think this new structure is for? Let us know in the comments. Meanwhile, last week, SpaceX completed an $850 million funding round, increasing its valuation to about $74 billion. According to CNBC News, the funds were raised at $419.99 a share. SpaceX's newest funding round comes after it started to accept pre-orders of the Starlink broadband internet service. The Starlink website now allows customers to pre-order a Starlink kit, priced at $499, with a monthly internet service fee of $99. The company currently operates more than 1,000 satellites in low Earth, and more satellites are yet to be deployed. Now, let's discuss what's happening at the Starship build site. Work is continuing at the propellant production plant at the construction site. This air separation unit dehumidifies, liquefies, and separates air into oxygen and nitrogen. The liquids are then pumped into the main storage tanks at the pad and are used for launch operations. Watch our previous video to know more about this distillation unit. Link in the description. A recent flyover by RGV Aerial Photography spotted two new stainless steel domes at the build site. These could be the roof of the water tank being built near the orbital launch mount. The second aft flap of Starship Serial No. 11 was found lying on the construction site last week. SN11 has already received an aft flap inside the high bay and is waiting for the next one. Now, let's take a look at the current status of various Starship prototypes with the help of this illustration from Brendan Lewis. The nose cone of Starship Serial No. 15, with fins attached, was spotted inside one of the Starship welding tents last week. Two aft flaps of SN-15, waiting to be mounted on the thrust section's surface, were also spotted at the build site. According to Elon Musk, SN-15 will be the first Starship prototype to receive major upgrades. The aft dome of serial number 17, under which the three sea-level Raptor engines get attached, was spotted at the build site last week. The nose cone barrel section, common dome, methane header tank, and the aft dome sleeve of serial number 18 was spotted one by one at the construction site over the past week. SpaceX has begun the construction of their latest Starship prototype, serial number 19. The methane header tank, which stores fuel required for the landing burn, was spotted at the build site last week. Watch our previous videos on the playlist to get updates on other Starship prototypes. Link in the description. 
With this, we have covered all the major updates from last week. Please share your thoughts on the latest science news and Starship updates in the comments section. Also, do not forget to subscribe to the channel for more weekly updates. And as always, thanks for watching.